hundreds of rebels bikies from across Australia descended on Canberra for their annual national meeting. Rebels members gathered in a function centre at the old Canberra Greyhound racing track and in a nearby motel in Simonston, over the weekend. This track has been unused since the government banned Greyhound racing in 2018. In a striking display of unity, hundreds of Rebels bikies were observed proudly donning their distinctive red and blue skull patches, on t-shirts, bikes, vests and jackets. Law enforcement authorities suspect that the Rebels MC deliberately chose this meet to assert their presence in the region. The gathering served as a demonstration of the club's numerical strength, underscoring their resolve to stand as formidable as any other motorcycle club in Australia. Moreover, it was seen as a display of power, strength, and unity, signaling to rival clubs and authorities alike that the rebels are a force to be reckoned with. This strategic move was not only about asserting dominance but also about reaffirming the bonds of brotherhood and solidarity among members, ensuring the club's continued prominence in the motorcycle community. The meeting was held behind closed doors and was declared strictly private. Operating under strict confidentiality, the gathering was prohibited for non-members, outsiders, or uninvited guests. Only a few trusted cameramen and journalists were allowed in the event. Here is a short snippet of what we could find. The gathering intelligence, they get it all wrong. But what if they, they're taking your photo and your photo and all those blokes in there, all their photos, they're taking all those pictures and they gather, put it in their database. Does that give you the shit? But first of all, they brand you as a criminal. So I'm a crim I haven't got no criminal record. I've run for politics, everything. I'm a criminal. Because you're a rebel. How does that, how does that yeah. make you a criminal? You know, like, you know? Uh, how can they make Danish as a criminal organisation when we have the smallest of criminal, like criminals in jail are the smallest bodies? There was a heavy police presence in the area with officers deployed on the road, on police vehicles and on mobile surveillance towers. Rebels MC members started arriving in Canberra on Friday 22nd of March, and police expected their gathering to extend until Sunday. Police implemented roadblocks at the entrances and exits of the Greyhound track, photographing all the bikies and conducting thorough searches before permitting entry. Every bikie entry in the area was recorded and their pictures clicked for police records. This meticulous documentation ensured comprehensive monitoring and heightened security throughout the event. Some members, hailing from various states, transported their motorcycles on trailers, potentially circumventing stricter anti-bikey laws in New South Wales. Sydney police also increased patrols on rural roads with officers closely monitoring participants to mitigate road-related issues, targeting antisocial behaviour, traffic violations, and alcohol-related crimes. It was reported that several high-ranking Rebels bikies were scheduled to attend the meeting, intending to deliberate on significant club matters and explore new bikey business opportunities. Their participation emphasized the importance of the gathering, reflecting a collective ambition to strengthen the club's operations and expand its ventures. Additionally, it was thought that exiled national president Alex Vela would address the club remotely via video link from Malta, offering insights and guidance to the members. The anticipation of such influential figures' participation would have added an air of intrigue and significance to the gathering, highlighting its importance within the Rebels community. According to reports Rebels from chapters nationwide including Darwin, Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney and far north Queensland attended the meeting. The approximate number was anywhere between 400 to 450. ACT police reported no significant incidents during the event, aside from a few cases of drug driving. Two members were charged with drug driving at a vehicle checkpoint in Simonston on Friday night, and several vehicle defect notices were issued, indicating a proactive approach to ensuring road safety. This demonstrates the effectiveness of both law enforcement measures and the cooperative behavior of attendees throughout the gathering, highlighting a commendable commitment to safety and compliance. Rebels developed their own tactics to prevent coming to the attention of authorities. Most flew into the territory, or traveled by car, with their motorcycles loaded onto a covered truck and sent separately. There are no laws prohibiting them from wearing their club colors and riding in mass groups around the ACT, as long as they do not commit any traffic offenses or other crimes. This made it a tense weekend for the police, as they lacked the authority or legal framework to prevent their congregation, unlike in Sydney, Perth, or Queensland. The rebels mass meeting has again raised the issue of consorting laws, which have been enacted in other states but not in Canberra. 
According to authorities consorting laws have effectively suppressed such large gatherings of outlaw motorcycle gang members elsewhere, leaving the ACT as a so-called safe haven. Authorities believe that the number of bikey clubs in Canberra has exploded in the past six months with bosses from various bikey clubs holding meetings here, because the national capital is seen as weak on crime. The national capital does not have any anti-consorting or anti-insignia laws. Five major bikey clubs including the Rebels, the Comancheros, Nomads, Hells Angels and the Finks all have chapters established in the territory. Canberra also attracts bikies due to its relaxed laws for use of substances. In 2019, the ACT became the first state in Australia to legalize the personal use of cannabis, according to which the residents in the territory are able to legally possess up to 50 grams of marijuana and cultivate up to two plants per person, or four per household. In 2023, Drugs of Dependence Personal Use Amendment Act 2022 was implemented, which decriminalized small amounts of commonly used illicit drugs, such as ice, heroin, cocaine, ecstasy, LSD, amphetamines and speed, which meant that the people found with small amounts of nine different types of illicit drugs will not be criminally prosecuted. For those who don't know, Rebels was founded by Clint Jacks in Brisbane, Queensland, in 1969 and was originally named the Confederates. Their insignia is a Confederate flag with a cap-wearing skull and 1% patch in the center. The Australian government and law enforcement consider the rebels to be a criminal organization, but the club claims to be a group of motorcycle enthusiasts rather than so-called gangsters. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, the rebels MC grew steadily and expanded its influence, establishing chapters in various Australian states. It gained a reputation as one of the most prominent and well-organized outlaw motorcycle clubs in the country. Over the years, the Rebels, like many outlaw motorcycle clubs, have faced allegations and legal challenges related to criminal activities such as drug trafficking, violence, and organized crime involvement. They have also been involved in conflicts with rival motorcycle clubs, particularly the Benditos and the Hells Angels. The leadership of the Rebels MC has seen changes over time, with different national presidents leading the club. One notable leadership change occurred when former national president Alex Vela faced legal issues and was stranded in Malta after a visit in 2014. Damien Vela assumed the role of national president. Rebels Constitution states that it is a non-profit organization which promotes the riding of Harley-Davidson motorcycles. Members are only permitted to join the club once and never to join another motorcycle club. The Rebels established their first international chapters in New Zealand in 2011. The club now has several international chapters in Asia, United States, Europe and even Russia. If you're looking for more exciting and eye-catching regular bikey updates, don't hesitate, smash that subscribe button, spread the word rapidly, hit that like button, share your thoughts in the comments section, and for the true grid Spartans out there, consider sending a super thanks to show some love. It goes a long way in keeping us motivated and the channel thriving, as most of the videos on this channel are not monetized due to its crime-related content. Stay tuned, stay curious, stay awesome and take care. Wu-Tang